this episode, I really want to dive into what people pleasing is, when to recognize that it's hindering us from whatever we want in life. Yeah. And it's really, let's talk about, because this is where I help people most, and I'm sure you're helping people with the same reasons, is the only time people uh, seek help is when they are, or when they are struggling. What struggle really means is not getting to where you want to go. So it's it's not being able to create the life that you want for yourself, not being able to become the person that you need to become, not even being able to reconnect with the person who you always were. So it's it's always achieving something. So it's all tied to a goal, right? Is, do you have a different definition for it? No, no, that's true. Struggle is, yeah, mostly who we think we should be or need to be get to where we want to go and we feel stuck exactly um, stuck in that struggle stuck in those patterns like people don't realize how to change those patterns right they just feel like this is how I am stuck this way no you're not <laughs> not at all so here's the thing when we get stuck in people pleasing to me right because hey I've gone through people pleasing. I've gone through the people savior. I've gone through all that stuff. <laughs> doesn't mean it doesn't affect me now. I still have those moments where I really want to help that person more than I really think I should. Or the classic, the classic statement from every coach is, but I see potential because I always, everything is measurable in my world. Wow. So we have the spiritual world that everything is abundant. And then we have the physical world where everything should be measurable. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. No wonder it's a stupid system when we're combining. Yeah, it's such a mess. Yeah. It's like overwhelming. <laughs> so yeah. when we're combining the <laughs> spiritual energetic world with the physical world, it's like blending two people with kids. Like, you know, you have, you have your set of kids. He has just his set of kids. You blend that family. Yeah. That's what it looks like when we're trying to blend our own selves together. Yes. Yes. Our own selves. It's, and we overcomplicate so much too. Yeah. So learning to be in the flow of things in the yeah. quantum. <laughs> really. In the quantum. Yeah. Well, here's the thing the quantum is only the space in which you go there. It's like a storeroom, right? You, you When you're cooking something, you're going to go in your storeroom or your fridge to get something for the yes. recipe that you need. Well, it's the same thing here, right? So let's say, for example, we have the quantum right there. The only thing, and the, I, I harp on this a lot because I, I, steer, I stay a little bit more away from the healing side of it because to me, I'm just a psycho goal achiever. Like that's, that's what I focus on is goals. What is the ultimate is goal? Yeah. What's the, that. yeah. And, and people can change it around because we live in a world where everybody's purpose driven and they're all lost on their purpose. Yes. How do we connect to my purpose? Yeah. How many people have come to you and said, help, help me with connect oh, all the time. And once you connect to the source that created you, your purpose will flow through you so much easier. <laughs> like you'll learn to trust that guidance. When you have that faith in something bigger than you, you can co-create those miracles. You can co-create that divine path that's been anointed and appointed to you, to your soul. Absolutely. So what is your purpose? I know what your purpose is. We talked about it in our last show, but your purpose is to bling, 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 bling. love. I love, I love, like, I want to sprinkle love. I want to help end suffering in this world. That's my biggest purpose. And to me, love does that. Love does that. When people feel safe in your presence, when people feel that you see them at a deeper level than their, their humanity, I see their soul, right? You feel the soul then you can connect to that purity, that innocence and that purpose of the soul and help them to reconnect to that love, that innocence of themselves. That way it dispels all shame, all guilt, unworthiness, because when you recognize that you're a miracle already, like how beautiful is that? That you're an actual miracle. Your heart beats without you needing to remember there's a beautiful force breathing life into you. And that same force created those beautiful oceans that we all love, the galaxies, those animals that we're obsessed with and see such purity and, and divinity within when we recognize that we are part of that same source, then we see that purity, that love, and that innocence within ourselves. And that's what I love to do with people. And then it can help to help them to move past their traumas, their wounds, their mistakes, you know, anything that they blame themselves for. Oh, and you know what, when, when you were just talking again, I have these visuals that come from that information that I get in the quantum, but this is what I see. So your purpose is like, okay, so let's say, for example, we have a, 
the world or the humanity in this dark cave right now. So there are certain people, not certain, a lot of people yeah. that's in that dark cave and yeah. they have gone deeper in the cave into the darkness, right? Because once we lose connection to our heart, to our yeah. purpose, to even waking up and what, what are we doing here? Yeah. We've gone deeper in that cave where it's dark. So yeah. here is Nancy, the big light. <laughs> you know, in the cave, there's always that, like you're looking for that ounce of light that you can <laughs> keep your eye on, right? Because without that light, you're just in pure dark. But we're never in pure darkness. There's always that twinkle of light that if you move closer to it, the twinkle gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're like that light. It could be far for some. It could be close for some. It doesn't matter. And here I am. I'm the I'm like the one that's like with the flashlight leading yeah. them by step, right? Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, you just got to come this way uh, and, you know, just move them along. Because when you're in the dark, you're frozen from fear. You just don't know how to move forward because. Oh, absolutely. And, and so I think that's the visual I got as you were explaining <laughs> your purpose, because my purpose has always been reconnect people back to their truth, back yeah. to the heart. And, yeah. and get them to sit secure in their heart, no matter what. And and it, it takes, well, for me, it takes a lot of courage to stand alone. And one Amazing. of the things I've had to bust is not only the fact that I've always been focused on goals anyways, that that's how I made it in the corporate world. That's how I made it in life is I'm very goal achieving, psycho focused. Beautiful though. You need that. People need that. Well, because without a goal what purpose is there exactly isn't purpose tied to the goal so everything you do in a day is tied to a purpose which is to go towards a goal but exactly. i think especially <laughs> in the spiritual world i don't think this is the problem with the spiritual circles is that they forgot that physical goals are important if yeah. you want to live in this physical body yes in the quantum we don't have goals everything is moving all the time there is yeah. no goal because free will takes away our ability to achieve goals in the quantum, right? Yeah, because, that's right. And then in quantum, we're not alone. We're one with everything. So it cannot be goal achieving. So, yeah. Like we're one with that creative force, right? The one who created us, which helps us to be able to focus on the goals that are on our divine path. That we're created, like our divine path is already, I believe, we have a destiny already predestined for us, but we're not always aware of that. And we sometimes have goals where we think we need to achieve certain things, but when they do the healing work and, and connect more to the creator, to their hearts, things change often. Like their mission could be way bigger and way more uh, loving than they realize. Like I've had CEOs come to me where they're like, oh my God, now they're, they're coaches and they're like healing, loving coaches. And they're like, you know, just totally different path. But when you connect to your creator, that's who puts you into this world. That's who knows what your goals should be. Right. But when we're disconnected, so disconnected, then we we're often in looking at someone and putting them on a pedestal. And we want to be like that person. You need to be you. You need to be you. And that's embracing all of you being in wholeness and connecting to that beautiful, loving force in order to be guided to those goals. And you work with that force too. So you help people to achieve their divine goals. Really, yes. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll give you an example. Uh, many years ago, I think it was 2017, 18, around there. I had a lady come to me. Well, she met me at a function. And she just came to me and she said, oh, Susan, I'd like to see how I can work with you. And I said, well, what is it that you want? What is it that, what's your goal, right? Because how am I supposed to help you? Well, you have to start somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People don't come to me for healing. They know damn well. I, I'll, I'll send them to Nancy, but I, I I cannot focus on, even though the work I do, there's a lot of healing components. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. I never go into the healing until I clearly know what purpose that healing is serving. So it's always still a goal, right? So yes. she came to me and I, she said, well, I want to go from making a million dollars this this year to 10 million next year. So how do how do how would you be able to get me from a million to 10 million? And so because she was already successful. So I said, I said, and when she said that to me, when I said, what is it that you want from me? Like, how can I help you? Oh, I want to make 10 million next year. I literally felt no energy, no happiness, no excitement. Like, I always say if I don't get an orgasm from your excitement, then I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> 
I don't know how to help you. <laughs> I need that because that's what drives the vibration to yeah. to attract what you want. So I'm like a vibrational meter mover, right? So, yeah. I, so I said, okay, well, I said, I have one question because I can help you get whatever you want, but I'm not convinced you want that. And she's like looking at me like, how, how, what do you mean? I said, I'm not, I, I'm just going to ask you a question. We'll test it out. And I said, what's 10 million going to get you that a million can't a year? Like literally, right? Like think about it, like yeah. making a million dollars a year. What's 10, what are you trying to go for that you need 10 million that a million won't buy you? I'm, I'm thinking she might tell me a hundred million dollar yacht. I don't know, but I don't know. And you know what? She just sat there and she had no answer for me. Um, right. She had no answer. She goes, I, and then finally I said, so what is it that you really want then? Like, just pretend, ignore what is logical, right? Yeah. Cause she's an accountant, right? Ignore what is logical. And let's just tell me no matter how ridiculous it is, what is it that you want? Right. Pretend I'm a genie. And she finally, after a little bit of prompting, she said, well, I'm single. She was in her mid fifties. She goes, I'm single. And I'm, I just would love to share my life with somebody now. Like she's successful, right? She, but there's just no man around. Da, 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 da. And she, when she was talking, I could feel her in her heart at that moment. Mm -hmm. right? And I said, ah, oh, well, love is what you want. Well, why didn't you just tell me that? I felt something at least like the other one. Yeah. Said, so why don't you work on that? But she goes, well, I didn't think there was any work. I mean, I'm always going to focus on what I'm successful at and not harp on love. I said, nobody has to harp on it. There's many elements that hinder you from even letting love in. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, yes. Right. So I said, this is not about going and finding a man for you. That's not my, I'm not that type of matchmaker. I get you to be the magnet. So anyways, she hired me to work with her on the love, but guess what? The thing that's hindering her from love is she was involved with a married man. Oh, right. So you see the law of attraction. So only yeah. after she started working with me, did we unravel all that stuff. And then guess what? So I got her detached from that got her to stand in her power. Guess what? She still attracted the money the next year. Oh so yeah. <laughs> focus on the money goal, right? Yeah. Because that's automatic anyways. Yes. Right? But what is blocking us? And here's the thing. One of the things we had to work on with her, and this is today's topic is people pleasing. She oh. didn't know how to say no. Mm. Yeah. It's a superpower when you can learn to say no. It's <laughs> such a superpower. And it's amazing how it shifts your vibration within you, shifts your level of self-worth and your ability to have more energy to pursue what you want to in life and to attract what you want to in life. So yeah, it's it's so powerful. It's yeah. huge. I mean, honestly, the, the amount of people pleasing work that I have to do with women just to get them to their goals, mm -hmm. like the amount of just, and they're empowered, successful women. But yeah. once we start doing, seeing why they are not hitting or creating the life that they want, I'm telling you now, 90% of the time is because they are entrapped in their oh, voice. Yeah. yeah. There's men like that too. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable. It's, it's huge, huge. It's uh, I, I'm, I was a queen martyr most of my life. Right. Like, most people who have had any trauma or anything like that are like just natural born martyrs because right? the self-worth is like nil and uh, you never feel like you're enough. You never feel like you can do enough or be enough for anybody. And I think that's all subconscious practically because I never consciously was like, oh, what am I going to get out of saying yes to this? Or mm -hmm. what am I going to get out of gifting someone with something? Or, you know, it was never a conscious, what am I getting out of this? But yet subconsciously, you're feeling like you're, you're being more by being a people pleaser. You're giving more by being a people pleaser. Meanwhile, you're depleting yourself and your liver's probably like screaming at you because that's where anger and resentment tends to go. But, you know, being a martyr is dangerous. It is freaking dangerous for your health, your vitality, your whole life. Like you're going to be on your deathbed with the biggest regrets ever. It's the biggest regret of the dying is living your life to please others and not living it the way you wanted to. So 
Yeah, it's huge. Very freaking important. Like well, can't put an emphasis on it. Coming from a recovered martyr, like yeah. the queen team. martyr, queen. Oh, I'm sorry. Or not extraordinaire, like brown. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think one of the things, and, and yes, I've struggled with people pleasing, but not, not queen level, of course, because no. otherwise no. I would not have. And this is why I think in my early twenties, I made a decision to only work with men. Like every, in, like, so I, I was very, in very much a male or oriented industries throughout my entire career. Yeah, because I realized in my first job, because I I worked in the microbiology, I was a a lab technologist, right? So I would work at hematology, microbiology, and we were all women. And no joke, the amount of breaks and and chit chatter and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, it's all fun and great and everything, but I'm getting nothing done. And that drove me nuts. So after that, (laughs) I'm like, so I, I literally got myself into careers that I would be mentored by men. And so I'm trained to be very focused. I'm trained and doesn't mean I am inside as a person. I could be all over the place because in the quantum, you, there's no logic. You're just all over the place. You see <laughs> every moving part for everyone yeah. that's out there. But in, in the physical space, I am very focused and, and very strategic and a very goal oriented and purpose driven, right? Always, always purpose driven. And believe me, to stay within the guardrails of the purpose that you serve in this life, uh, those guardrails is your voice to determine who you give your time to, mm-hmm. prioritize who is most important to you, and even feeling guilty to say that means you have issues with people pleasing. Oh, yeah. I mean, what is wrong with saying that, well, my husband is priority. I, yeah, of course, I'm pri- but my husband is me, so it's priority my son is priority because my son is part of me like you know what I mean like it all boils down to you what's important to you who are important to you absolutely so you measure everything but if you stay within those the 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 laws of respect of priority what's important to you you will not have any less guilt not any less guilt in saying no to certain things because they don't fit into your system. But how many of us women just are operating on everybody else's system? All the time. Yes, absolutely. And you know, it's so, I always tell my clients, I'm like, no is a full sentence. Just start saying no. You don't have to explain anything. You never have to explain. Just no. And if it's someone you love, just say, I love you, but no. And it'll get easy. It does. It gets so much easier because you become less drained, less bogged down, less resentful in life, you know, more naturally optimistic, not the the false positivity that BS, but, you know, actually you're, you're free, you're liberated from the people pleasing over time. And it doesn't take that long where you start to feel the benefits of that. Just, no, and you have to be mean about it. It's not mean to say no, but it's, it's an act of love. It's saying yes to you and your family your loved ones, your purpose, your mission in this life. And uh, it's okay to say no, because who wants to do stuff out of obligation? Your heart's not even in it. So you're doing it out of obligation. You think people don't feel that from you? We're all energy. They know their heart is feeling your heart blocked off, doing something out of pure obligation because you feel like you have to. That is not living. Like you need to give, like when you're saying yes to something, say yes from your heart and live from your heart as much as possible. So- you know what? Martyrs live with a lot of pain that's invisible behind oh, a tons. Yeah. behind a smile. And yeah. um, I know because it's part of us being a woman. Like, honestly, I, I'm sorry, but it is a physiological thing here. Okay. We have hormones. Yes. <laughs> we, do. we have a body that gives birth, which means we have a body and a system that can multitask on everybody else's lives other than yes. ourselves which is the baby. So we have eyes in the back of our heads or the back of our butt everywhere. We have eyes (laughs) looking looking outside of us. So guess what? We are trained to be looking outward. We are trained to make sure that that baby is not climbing on the shelves when we're, our back is turned somewhere else. So we have the senses that are like multi-dimensional. So for us to be solely goal achieving, strategic and all that, it's something that needs to be learned. Mm -hmm. Big time. And you're the perfect teacher for it. You really are. 
Yeah. Like you're so trustworthy and so honest and truthful, you know, and women just are natural born nurturers and we nurture everyone else, but ourselves often because we're taught not to love ourselves, not to put ourselves first. It's selfish, you know, but we have to, in order to be nurturing and serving from a full cup, a radiant heart, not a bleeding heart, a bleeding heart depletes the hell out of you. And then you're resentful and you're just dragged through the mud. Like there's nothing left when we are actually nurturing ourselves first, filling our cups first, then we can, we can serve that much better and we'll be more on purpose than ever and able to set those goals and achieve them. When you're in your radiant heart, it's natural. Absolutely. You know, here's the, here's the reality though. And with full compassion, because I, you and I, ha we operate on compassion. So I, even though I've not, haven't been through the certain things that you have been through in life, or even most of my clients, I look at my clients, I go, oh my God, I am like in awe of all of you. Like it, 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 the thing that inspires me the most are people's stories. Mm -hmm. Because I look at my clients, I'm like, I, I honestly don't think I would survive your life. I, th I think I would just check out halfway. Like, I, I don't know how like so many people have such incredible journeys that they've been through. But one of the things that I do know with all compassion, people that come from severe people pleasing, there have been narcissistic attacks in their life, experiences with narcissists, sexual trauma, huge. Oh my God. Like I, it's just all coming from everywhere now. I think I, I come from a very bubbled world, I guess, right. Uh, compared to so many people that I see and work with and know but I'm like, what the heck? Like, world do we live in? So we do need more Nancys out there sprinkling love <laughs> as much as we can, but there's not it's more than it's... one Nancy, right? No, seriously, no. we need so much. And I think this is why it's important. The people pleasing side is if you want to slow down your path to achieving everything you want to achieve in this life for you, keep being a martyr. Keep being a people pleaser. Keep mm -hmm. living for everybody else. And keep sick. Diagnosis yeah. of sex. Yeah. Yeah. Keep trapping yourself within your own disempowerment. You cannot do that. And I will use my words to slap you awake because this is done with. You cannot. And you know what? Saying no, you said it, is one word. And I can tell you one thing. The people that are going to make you feel guilty for saying no are the wrong people anyway. Yes. They'll so fall out of your life over time. The wrong people will leave your life. That's what happened to me when I recovered from <laughs> martyrdom. And, you know, one of them was a best friend. Like I was friends with her since I was 13. But yeah, the way that it happened was like crazy. It was like a form of betrayal that I never even dreamed of. You know, I never thought this person would do that. But now looking back, I'm like, yeah, she would. She always wanted what everyone else had. So it was, you know, I was in that cloud of, you know, seeing Then she was a narcissist. They, they train you to put them on pedestals basically. Right. So you're there to serve them. You're never really thinking of yourself and your life because you're there to compliment them. You're there to support them. You're there to like, just to make them feel good about themselves. Like, and it was years of that. And yeah, I've attracted many narcissists over the years, but um, once you step into your power and you start saying no, and those people start to fall away, you're raising your vibration so much that you're no longer going to attract those people. They'll know better because the word no <laughs> it's in your system it's like no i don't take crap and i i respect myself i honor my time i honor my purpose and yeah you can only do so much in a day where you know you need to be in your heart when you're saying yes you need to be in your heart when you're focused on your life and it's not that hard it's really not that hard to do that absolutely and you know what you're right and it makes it even easier if you are tethered to the purpose behind why you say no it's not yeah. just you know there's one thing to say no because you're protecting yourself and so i i look at it like this we need to start building filters within our heart like that's that's ho holding our heart in, in place right it's not a wall a wall oh. is disconnecting so you're saying no to everything and no, I, no, you want that love to come in and you want to say yes to the right things. And yeah. Absolutely. So let's look at one of the laws I follow. I don't 
follow all the laws in the world. Like I will jaywalk. Um, I will never steal or anything, but mm -hmm. I will jaywalk. I will, you know, whatever, right? Things like that. I, like, I don't really follow rules, but then I will follow a rule. Like if there's, there's a long line, I will feel awful if I step in front and cut in. Like I'll still wait yeah, yeah, yeah. patiently. But when it comes to jaywalking, though, so to me, I make my own rules based on consciousness. Right? If it's a conscious decision to not, like, let's say I walk on a bus, I put a, I will, even the bus driver is not there, I'll still put the bus fare in there because yeah. it's my conscious, yeah, you know. But then if it's jaywalking, ah, whatever, I'm just going to jaywalk, right? But here's the thing, right? So there has to be a purpose to saying no. And the thing is, if you want to, be in a higher vibration. Let's talk about the laws of the universe because I follow the laws of the universe. And it's it's based on Raymond Hallwell's laws. So he talks about the law of vibration, law of thinking, law of supply, law of increase, law of cause of effect, laws of polarity. But law of attraction is the most misunderstood thing out there. It's yeah. unbelievable. I think it's half joke because people don't understand the law of attraction. Yeah. Or, and the law of vibration talks about frequency is what vibration are you operating at? Yeah. So important. It is, but you also have full control of what vibration you are oh, in. Absolutely. Every choice you make, yeah. all the entertainment that you surround yourself with, whether you watch the news, uh, movies with tons of murders and rapes or like, I mean, it all affects you, what you're feeding your body. If you're eating a Big Mac or you're eating you know, fruits and vegetables or whatever, you feel it. You instantly feel that difference. You know, when you start to tune in, you'll become more aware and awake. Well, that's the thing, because if we build a wall around our heart and mm -hmm. say no to everything, no. because we're in protection mode, which is a lower vibration than yeah, in yeah. mode. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You so, have to be honest with yourself. What do you want to say yes to? And what do you need to say no to? Exactly. Yeah. And it's all revolving around what's important to you. What is your goal? What is your purpose? So yeah. reconnecting with our purpose, you know, everything is worked at the same time because time is of an essence, right? Time is our only physical enemy, really. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get it back. No, you know, I, I know that the spiritualists, they all say, well, time is not important. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because if you want to be in your physical body, yes, yeah, it, it is. is important. Absolutely. It's so important. Your life is only so freaking long in the physical form. <laughs> So, yeah. so yes, we could be all immortal on a soul level, but you still yeah. have this physical journey to undergo. Yes. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I always, I, I look at the, the empowered women's movement. Okay. And I always look at, well, empowerment is not a black and white thing. You are not a state of empowerment is evolving all the time. You can be empowered in this vibration, but once you move to a next frequency, you are no, you have to learn to be empowered there now. But if we are empowered now with a, a wall around our heart, you're still protecting yourself. You're not inspired. It's so you're, yes, it's fear, right? So it's really understanding the dynamics of where you sit in that spectrum to undergo whatever work you need, wherever you are. And I always look at it like this, uh, Nancy, it's like, you're in a car, you're going to a car, me and my analogies, right? You go into a car. <laughs> so cute. And you have your GPS machine, the Waze, right? Or whatever yeah. you use. There are only two parameters you need to be able to go from one place to another. You have to enter one thing first, which is your destination. If you don't enter a destination, what is the purpose of in that? What are you doing? In yeah. that? <laughs> exactly. You'll be all over the place. No, you're just sitting there. Like if you don't right. enter a freaking destination... Yeah. You're just driving haphazardly anywhere, right? So yes. destination to make a GPS machine work. But then there's one more element that if, if it's not connected, then you're not even going in the right direction, which yes. is your locator. Like, yeah. where are you? Like, if you, if Nancy punches in that she wants to go to New York, but then your location says you're in Montreal and you're in Timmins, you're not going very far. No. <laughs> no. Exactly. So the destination in that GPS machine, this analogy talks about, okay, well, hold on. What is my goal? Like literally, like, what do I want to achieve? So Nancy and I are here with the girls in the quantum with the goal of bringing people into a community where we really hammer in the logical side of how to make that intelligence that you have with the connection with the universe or the quantum to put it into physical form. That mm -hmm. is the goal of every yes. one of our talks. Right. Exactly. Yes, absolutely.
So the it. yeah. So we plugged in the destination. Okay, the locator. Well, who is Susan? Where does she sit in this? And who is Nancy? And who, if you and I are not clear in who we are, hmm. then we're gonna be moving in such weird directions because of the fact that we're starting from the wrong standpoint. Hmm. If I am not anchoring in and owning Susan as Susan, as the love hacker, or Nancy is not owning Nancy as the love sprinkler, and you're <laughs> trying to be Susan, I'm trying to be you, we're not going to be getting very far here. Exactly. Lost souls. Yeah. So yeah. for any individual out there, plug in your destination right now, whoever's listening to this, before you even go on with your next little bit of running around in circles, sit down and think about what is it that you want? What is the goal that you want to achieve? And then, okay, fine. That's great. Easy said and done. Now, what's your starting point? Who are you? What are your issues? What are your problems? What are your gifts? What are your strengths? What is your competition? What are you doing that's right? What are you doing that's wrong? My gosh, all that is in the locator. Yeah. Yeah. What's your story and how do you want your story to end? What do you want your life to be? Because yeah. you can change anything. You can create anything, no matter what your past is. Now, sometimes your, your past, your pain will be your purpose. You can help others with what you've learned, what you've grown through. Yeah. So, And that's why I think starting point requires absolute honesty with yourself because toxic positivity mm -hmm. and all that is spiritual ego. These are the things that block you from starting in the right point. Be mm -hmm. honest. It's okay. okay. Hostage. Yeah. If if you have money blocks, then you have money blocks. What's I'd rather you be honest with yourself. Say, I don't have money. I live in the invisible money vibration. Well, if you don't have <laughs> money, you are not living in the money vibration. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not going to survive. Like barely. You'll be struggling. Of course. So let's anchor in on starting point. Be honest. Because I'm telling you now, the moment we get aligned, with whoever we are today, no judgment, the car starts moving really fast, but, yeah. but otherwise we're in circles. So here's the thing, queen recovered queen martyr. Guess <laughs> what? The, the, the queen of all queen martyrs was mother Teresa. She was the queen of all queen martyrs mm -hmm. that, that created this whole line of other princess martyrs. That's martyrs. <laughs> but check this out though. Here's the thing. Mother Teresa had millions to access into. Do you know how much support and money she was given on her mission? Oh yeah, tons. So she chose to be a martyr. It was a choice. Yeah. Until you have those millions, you can choose to be a martyr. But otherwise, if you don't have the financial security or stability in your life right now, it means no, you are now sacrificing yourself. That's not, that's not empowered martyrdom. No, right? not at so all. Let's get real about what is the truth around spiritual ego versus empowerment. And Nancy, I know that, you know, I mean, and this is the hardest thing. I, I'm, I'm so aware of the spiritual space because I was in there for so many years of that need to believe that money is energy and that it just flows. I know that's true in the spiritual world, but you have two aspects of yourself. Yes. <laughs> you still have to work for it. You still have to yeah, make it happen. It's not yeah. just going to flow to you. Yeah. And so one of the laws from the laws of the universe is the law of receiving. You know, yeah. we are, we women love to give. Yeah. Oh, I love giving. I love giving freebies. I love doing things for people just from the kindness of my heart and you too. Yes. Right. Your soul. It's oh. a selfish thing really, because it's so rewarding. Oh yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's addictive, right? It's so addictive. Good. But, it is addictive. but there's a law of giving and receiving. Yes. It's a cycle. And if you break the cycle without learning how to receive, you are not operating amongst uh, abiding by the laws of the universe, which means you will not attract the right things to you. That's right. It's yeah. And Bob Proctor always taught this, right? So yep. you've learned all of this too from him. Yeah, it's so true. Right. So true. Yeah. So most people can't receive these days. No. It's, it's hard. Even receiving a compliment. Like, oh my goodness, when I compliment people and they're like, oh, well, you too. I'm like, no, you're going to receive the freaking compliment 
or, you know, like, or they say, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, okay. You know, like, I don't know how many times in a day, even at the clinic here when I'm up front and someone has a beautiful smile or something. And I, I don't have a filter. I'm going to say it and oh, well, I love your smile too. No, <laughs> you're going to receive just for you right now. And it's so hard just to receive a freaking compliment. So imagine trying to receive abundance or living in your purpose. Like people don't even feel worthy of receiving. You have a beautiful smile. Like the simplest things, when you start to just say thank you, and then you can start saying thank you as you are creating your destiny, co-creating with the source energy. It's beautiful. All you have to do is say thank you and live in gratitude and do put the work in and be honest with yourself. But you can start with saying thank you for a compliment. It's pretty simple. <laughs> like it's not that hard. Well, here are some simple tech uh, like tasks that you can implement in your everyday, you know, just yeah. saying thank you. That's it. And not having to reciprocate. The thing is, true givers just want to give. They're not expecting yeah. to reciprocate. And, and so that's why even in marriages, when I work with relationships or relationships, not just marriages, is when you have two givers competing, it's not fulfilling. No, no, God, no. You have to have one person that's stronger in receiving. Yes. And the other, so, so you're teaching each other one to give, give more and teaching the other person to receive more. You see what I mean? That's what makes a beautiful relationship. But even friendships too, but friendships is not the same thing as relationships. So that is key that you have to have your op two people over giving. It's just not fulfilling because no. when I give to you, it, it, it makes me burst with inspiration when you're receiving it. And, and yes. it's, it's, it's a gift to you for them to receive, right? Yes, exactly. Right. Isn't that what a giver is? So here's the thing when it comes to People pleasing. One of the things that we need to also do, like other than, I'll, I'll give you an example. One of my clients, she had severe sexual trauma from the age of five and only started working on herself two years ago at the age yeah. of 49. Like, it's unbelievable. I never had therapy, never had, like, it's unbelievable how this woman has undergone her life. But the one thing that she built up around her heart was a wall. Yeah. So she had a way of keeping people from seeing her. So that, and she had this way of just over complimenting people, like just gone crazy and over complimenting. But that's because yeah. she's trying to put your eyes back to you. So she, you yeah. don't. Yeah. 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 Isn't it, isn't it a typical thing that a lot of women that go through that? It's like, yeah. don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Yeah. So here's one of the tasks that I, that I do for it. Cause I have a group of clients that we just have this like inspirational, motivational group. And so she would send everybody all these compliments every day. So I said, okay, we're going to switch it up because everybody is sick of hearing your compliments. As yeah. as we know where it's coming from. So yeah. I said, for every compliment you give somebody, you're going to give two gratitudes in your own life. Yes. So every compliment has to come with two gratitudes. Perfect. Because I think we need to feel safe to look at ourselves again. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it's a scary thing to go within. That's why so many people are constantly looking outside of themselves for significance, for validation, for, you know, material, because it makes them feel like they are significant. They're good. They don't want to go inside to see the wounded parts, to connect to the shadow, to face those parts of you that you think are so unlovable and so unacceptable. You know, it's a big thing. It's hard. But once you start, it just flows. I mean, it's not a straight line. Healing's never a straight line, but it's a journey, but it's it's so worth it. The other side is so beautiful and empowering, true empowerment. I'm in the outer circles, much, yeah, much, circle. much more fun here. I'm at the bar with my drinks and the talking to everybody. I'm like, no, the outer circle is much better because the, <laughs> the outer circle is where we don't need, we're not in there for significance. We are here we own who we are we know what we contribute to the world we make a massive impact with anybody that comes across our path but from a very deep way and it's from ourself so the outer circle is where significance is, doesn't exist perfect you yeah, have significance a dangerous human yes to have yes. as number one yeah the yeah. outer circle is that you're looking in on everybody else trying to like be somebody or trying to be something work in other people's system the inner circle has their own system the yeah. outer circle we create our own systems and we respect each other yeah it doesn't matter what we truly believe in the faith of who we are that will attract we truly work on the work that we need we feel safe with each other there's no judgment in the outer circle yeah. because we're alone 
Yeah. We're alone. That's what the outer circle is like. You're not part of the inner circle, but whatever the frick that means, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh there's so many different types of inner circles for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And when like my son, he was obsessed with Tony Robbins when he was two. He wanted to write a book with him and want all this stuff. He was so obsessed with him, but it was from his heart. Like he's two years old saying this. It wasn't ego at all. He met Tony, like, oh my God, love Tony. But then he said, like, everyone kept saying, he's going to be the next Tony Robbins. He's going to be the next Tony Robbins. I'm like, no, he's not. Tony's Tony. No one's going to be the next Tony Robbins. My son's going to be Braden in whatever he chooses to do. So he's like, mom, I think, you know, if I do this book with Tony, I'm not going to always think that he's the reason I'm successful in life. And he said this when he was 10. And I was like, that's true. You might. And he's like, I, I really want to achieve my own success before I do anything with anybody, anybody else. I'm like, okay, you do your thing. Like, I trust you. You're so, so much brighter than I am. Like, you know, so I'm not going to tell you not to do that. So of course he just totally didn't want that significance. Cause people were like, that's when people were flocking and bringing gifts to us. Like, cause we had a picture with Tony and Sage and I'm like, that is so fake. Like, just because I, I took that picture down not long ago, but not down, but it's still, in, it's still there. But I was like, oh my God, you get people wanting to be your friend because they think you're having tea with Tony Robbins every week. Like, <laughs> no, he's a busy man. And we're not, we weren't in it for that. We weren't in it for Brayden becoming Tony. I thought that was so weird. Everybody kept saying that. And I'm like, nope, he's going to be him. I love Tony Robbins. He's wonderful, but I don't want my son to follow in his steps and not be him. I don't and want him to have significance because of a book with him. No, it's not. I'm so I'm proud of him. I'm so God, proud of him. Yeah, but, um, that is so good. Yeah, and I totally understand where he's coming from because yeah. in my early 20s, I decided to step out of the, I, I, didn't fin I didn't finish my university. I went off to Hong Kong when I was 23 and I just walked away from everybody, walked away from everybody. All my friends were in university. They graduated from university. I said, I refuse. And as a woman, it's really challenging because they, you're so judged on so many levels but um yeah so when I went to Hong Kong I said I'm gonna make something of myself without an education without that formal education I'm gonna I'm not gonna say I need a university degree to be successful and I went to Hong Kong and made things happen without yeah. an education I just wanted to prove to people that you have your own system in doing things and if I would have finished school, I would have done it for everybody else, for judgment, for lack, you know, whatever yes. it is. And you know what? I can't say I was conscious because, hey, it is what it is, right? I mean, I, I didn't study personal development until I was in my 40s. So back in the day, it was just blind, just go, go, go and screw everybody else. So there, there was a bit of narcissism and selfishness from my part. But thank goodness through the consciousness work, I've learned how to use that consciously to help others rather than self-serving. For 10 years, I moved up the corporate ladder. I learned how to connect. I learned how to network. I learned how to sell. I learned how to how to hold my space within big spaces. You know? And really the, the thing I learned is when I finally left Asia after 11 years, I left having achieved the highest success I can at that point. And I left and I came back to university because I said, you know what? I, I don't shun school. I, I do believe school is important, but I will do it on my time. Yeah. No one will dictate what I do. And I also don't want to depend on a certificate to be successful somehow. And this is one thing my father, he had no high school degree or anything like that. But he said always one thing to me. He said, it's not what you know, it's who you know, which really drove me to focus on connecting with people in the most in the right way. And it took me a long time to learn that. But, but as women, I think we need to learn that we need to learn how to be a little bit more selfish, but consciously selfish. I, conscious selfishness is not a bad thing, is it? No, no, we, we have to actually do that. It's like non-negotiable to have a strong foundation to create the life that you want to co-create that to surrender to the highest source and, and just be in that flow, be in that state of creation. We have to, because if we're not taking time to connect to ourselves and to think of ourselves, then we're always going to be disconnected. Yep. You'll never have that, that surrender, that connection. We're always going to be looking outside of ourselves. Yeah. And we can't do that. 
no. it's already hard enough as women to look inside. Yes. But here's the thing. Here's the truth and reality. This is another truth bomb. It kind of hurts, but it's the truth. Oh, truth well, is good. If we women can't even say no to other women, if we cannot have a voice with other women in a relationship, you will be stomped. Oh, yeah. You will not have a healthy relationship if you don't even know how to exercise your voice with yeah. other women. That's true. Because when attract, love you get that frequency, you'll attract it. It's true. Yeah. And then, but in love, it makes it more challenging. Your yes. guilt buttons are pressed 10 times harder than with a girlfriend, for goodness sake. Oh, that's that's for sure. <laughs> no <What? lie> there. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you want to have a healthy, loving relationship, intimate with a love partner, never mind if I don't care if it's a man or a woman, I don't know, what, whatever, right? You need to make sure that your voice is healthy outside within your own friend circles. Yes. And there is a way of saying no. There is a way of, you don't have to just say no and be rude about it. You just no, say, you say it lovingly. Yes. It is a full sentence. You just yes. say no. You don't have to be going on and on with like a huge story. Why not? But, you know, if someone asks you why not, then give them an honest answer. You just don't have time or it doesn't resonate, whatever. But, but I just started saying no years ago and it was, it was perfect, but I don't say it meanly like, no, like <laughs> it's like, no, I can't. Sorry. Like, or you don't even have to say sorry. Cause you're not really sorry. Like, <laughs> like I, I remember I used to have my voice message saying, sorry, I'm not available to take your call right now. And I'm like, am I really sorry? No, like I have a life, so I can't take your call right now. Please leave me a message. Like we're always saying freaking sorry about everything. <laughs> we're Canadians I'm saying sorry about everything. I know Canadians are the worst for that, but <laughs> Peace. We say sorry when we don't need to. But here's okay. the thing. Right? Here's the thing. Um, there's another thing that you need to look at. So other than, of course, don't say sorry when you're saying no. That's a good one. Gratitude. Make sure that you mm -hmm. stay in gratitude. Huge. Grateful for who you are and what you have. Because if you're not, you're going to be living everybody else's life. But here's another thing is learn to understand trade-offs. For every yes you say that you should say no to, what is it that you're giving up? Yeah. Think, like Use your thinking. What are you giving up? Yeah. And here's an answer for you, because I hear this a lot and I don't struggle with this. Uh, so I need to ask you. A lot of my clients, a lot of people say, say to me, oh, well, you know, because I would ask them, it's like, so why are you hanging around with these people? It's just a question. I'm not judging. Just I, I need to understand your behavior. And they'd be like, well, I, I don't get anything out of it, but I've known them for 30 years. They've been my childhood friends. And I said, so, okay, so what are you getting out of it? I, like, I don't care how long you've known somebody. Yeah. You get that? Yeah. It has to be quality, not quantity. But, you know, some of my greatest friends, there's such a deep love there. So, yeah, you could be totally different people in so many ways, but there's that root love. If you have that, I totally understand because I have that with a few of my beautiful friends. But... Yeah, if it's just a habit and it's not healthy, there's no quality, you become who you hang out with. Yeah, you truly do. So, yeah. yikes. Yeah, you might need to minimize the amount of time you spend <laughs> with them or energetically just kind of cut them off. But but if there's some kind of soul connection that's healthy, then you, absolutely. Yeah. That's a big statement. I love that. And this is how we're going to... And this conversation is, it is so true. You become your inner circle, the inner circle of people that you spend time with. Yeah, absolutely. So unless yeah. they are people you respect, they are people you love and they bring mm -hmm. something into your life of value yes. because that's everything as us women, we forget to look at, well, what value it's like another guilt thing. What value are they oh, bringing to your life, yeah. right? It's yeah. true. We, we're so like, oh, we shouldn't think like that. We have love for everybody. Well, okay. So my next question is, so what are you trading off? Mm -hmm. What are you trading off? Oh, right? so what don't you have in your life that you want? Because that's what you're trading off. And I think that that's my way of really hammering in who I say yes to, who I say no to. And luckily, as we're doing this work to say the more knows we say with love, with love and self-respect, yes, absolutely, self we move our vibration up. And guess what? In my world, I don't have to reject anyone. They don't even come near me. Yeah, no, it's true. It's a frequency, right? It's so yeah. true. 
Yeah, I never have to reject anyone. And another another way of knowing is when someone's calling you, how do you feel while that's call that call is coming through? You want to just not answer that call? That's a sign right there. Or are you excited that they're calling you? You're looking forward to that phone call. You'll know the energy of how you resonate with that person while they're calling. You're like, oh my God, so-and-so is calling. Well, then you might need to step back a little bit and set a few energetic boundaries, you know, <laughs> or maybe totally disconnect, whatever it is. And it could be a spouse, it could be a friend, it could be a boss, it could be anything. But if you're excited and you feel love or whatever, even if you don't have time to answer that call, it's the energy. It's what you feel in your heart when they're calling you. Oh, I love it. I guess that that really closes off really what we want to share here with regards to people pleasing, because honestly, it is one of the biggest blocks to achieving the life you want to create. And yeah. it's so important that never mind all the materialistic stuff, but feeling a great sense of empowerment and pride for yourself. If you're not proud of yourself 24 seven, that's something you need to achieve. And yeah. you can't be proud of yourself if you're saying yes to a heart that wants to say no. Yeah, exactly. And your self-talk too will change. You know, you're not going to beat yourself up because you said yes to something you don't want to do. You're like, oh, it's so stupid. What the hell's wrong with me? I'm such an idiot. Or what? like your body carries that vibration. Your cells are like getting toxic because of the way you talk to yourself, you know, yeah, you'll, you'll be more loving towards yourself because you're actually respecting yourself more. I love that, Miss Love. Yes, <laughs> Miss Love. <laughs> so stay tuned to the Outer Circle community where we will guide everyone on their daily journeys to healing as we th we develop the thinking to really start being in the driver's seat of creating the life you want to live. It's about healing and driving at the same time. It, you, you drive and you, you, you're driving at the same time as you're thinking, right? I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to heal first and then think it, it all comes together. Oh, yeah, there, yeah, absolutely. And then you'll see how fast the car will go. Is yes. there any last words from you, my darling? Just know that you're a miracle. Like you are pure love in this beautiful, beautiful temple that is holding your soul. It's hosting your beautiful soul. So remember that you're not disconnected from the creator. You're not disconnected from, you know, the miracle worker that can work with you. That miracle worker is in every heartbeat and in every breath. So whenever you feel overwhelmed or alone, just put your hand over your heart and breathe and just know that something's beating your heart. Something's breathing life into you and connect to that force. Ask that force for guidance, for help. And remember to stay in gratitude. Ah. <sighs> Well, that closes off today's conversation. You know what? I think you just led us into our next talk, which is what gratitude is all about. The truth um, about gratitude. Yeah, I love that. Beautiful. All right. All right, sweetheart. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. Love you. Love you all.